Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. How do you do? Yes. You're doing well? I'm pleased to see you. I always am. Let me see how I continue to say that. Uh, preaching is one of the highest privileges God can give to anyone. And um, He's given that to me, so I'm always, I thank God every day, and I think that's a literal statement. Every day for the privilege of preaching. Every day. Whether I preach to 10 in the jungle, or 10,000 in a large city, I thank God because angels would love to preach. But they're not allowed to. Angels are falling over themselves to talk about Jesus. Because they know him so well. But God has told them, no, let them do it. Those for whom my son came to die, let them do it. And so God has given to me a privilege that angels would love to exercise. And so I'm always happy to see you because I can't preach the pews. Um, so thank you for coming. And that's one of the reasons why I try to be so direct when I speak so that you're not confused because the privilege is so precious. I can't waste it, you understand, by beating around the bush. can't do that. So I praise God for this moment and I thank Him for your constancy and your attendance so far. This is the second night, I believe, of the second week. And you remember what I said, once the first week has gone by, the second and the third, they fly very quickly, so please keep coming. How many of you have come every time so far? Can I see your hand? This is good, it's encouraging. If you've missed one night or two or three, I am glad that you are here. Our subject for today is numb and dumb. What did I say? Numb and dumb. Numb and dumb. And I hope you listen very carefully as I deliver this message. Before I do, please do three things for me, and God will be pleased with you if you do. Favor number one, if you have a cell phone, and I know you do, please turn them off. You'll observe I never bring mine with me. One day I was in the pulpit preaching, and I thought I had turned it off. <laughs> and the thing went off, but it went off. What had happened? Yeah, I had turned it off, but I turned it off and put it in my Bible bag here. When I opened the Bible like this, and I put it down, I pressed the turn on button. <laughs> so it came on accidentally, but it was on very low, so no one heard it. So I tried to be cool and I turned it off. <laughs> uh, because I'm always asking people to turn off theirs, you see. You can't ask people to do something and you don't do it. So my, my, my insurance is just don't bring it to me. Now, favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me. And please say from your heart, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. My words have no life. The words of God have life. Amen. And favor number three, I really, really want you to think of what you're hearing. And if at any time I say something that you don't understand, write it on a piece of paper, let me know. The pastor brought to my attention two days ago. You remember when I said, in the new world, we don't need a savior. Anyone remembers that? Yes. yes. But we'll always need one. A creator. And he told me, Pastor, someone may have walked away with the impression that you said, in the new world, we don't need Jesus. And it made sense to me, so I want to let you know tonight, in the new world, we don't need a savior, but we always need Jesus, who is the creator. So please, don't think you don't need Christ. You need, without Christ, no one can survive, and nothing can exist. Are you with me? Nothing can exist, not even rock without Jesus. Why do I say that? Because Christ said, if the disciples keep quiet, the very stones will cry out. If a stone can cry out, there must be something about a stone that I don't understand. You understand? So, uh, we always need Jesus Christ. We always do. Amen. Dumb and dumb, let's pray now. Loving Father in heaven, we ask you again for help. We confess our weakness. Romans chapter 3, verse 11 says, there's none that understandeth. We don't understand. So help us to understand, dear God, I pray. Teach us your word tonight. Make it clear and soften our hearts by the work of the Spirit that we may receive this truth in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to trace very broadly two lines of people extending from outside the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 4, 
I'll read from verse 16. The Bible says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Now we know that Cain committed the very first murder on the face of the earth. He killed his brother Abel. Verse 17 of Genesis 4 tells us, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare a son and called his name Enoch. And he built the city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Here we have, if you compare Genesis 4.18, with Genesis, uh, Genesis 4, 17, with Genesis 2, verse 9, or verse, yes, verse 8, here's what you get. In Genesis 2, 8, the Bible says, And the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. In Genesis 4, 17, the Bible says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare a son, and called his name Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Now, we have... Cain building the very first city. Now, you know as well as I do, when the FBI compiles crime statistics, they don't compile statistics from the country. Almost all the statistics come from where? Big cities. And I say almost. Overwhelmingly, crime is concentrated in cities. You don't drive through the country and come across a strip club. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yeah, when you drive through large cities, you come across the strip clubs. You don't go driving through the country with a house over here, a house over there, one over the hill, and come across a casino. You find that in cities. When God confounded the languages of the builders of Babel, He did it in order to scatter them. They were building the city in order to concentrate in one place. Genesis 11 verse 4, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. We don't want to scatter, we want to concentrate in one place. Contrary to God's will, which was scattered. So when Noah came out of the ark, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, the Bible says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish what? The earth. The earth. Scatter. This preference for cities came from the line of Cain. Now I live in the city. Ann Arbor, about 150,000, I think. Some people live in LA, most of you, I imagine. Half a million in LA. The most populous state is California, so LA is probably the most populous city. You have Mexico City with unnumbered millions. You have Tokyo, millions, millions, Manila, millions, millions. It's a, people just on top one another. Experiments have shown when you do that to animals, they start killing each other and fighting. Of course, you don't need that experiment, you just look at life in the city and you see the same thing happen to the city. God's arrangement was live. Scatter. Don't concentrate. Concentration, city life, murder came from the line of Cain. Let's keep reading Genesis chapter 4, verse 19. And unto Irad was and Enoch was born Irad. Irad begat Mahujoel, and Mahujoel begat Mathusuel, and Mathusuel begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. What else do we have in the line of Cain? Polygamy. This business of more than one wife came from the line of Cain. Are you with me? That line also produced a second murder. Look at verse 23. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, and hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. Someone said something he didn't like, kill the guy. So the first two murders in the line of Cain. So there's blood in the line of Cain. We have city living in the line of Cain. We have polygamy in the line of Cain. So what we have in the line of Cain is opposition to God's law. You didn't get it? Yes. You got it? Murder is a violation of commandment six. Cain's line lived a wicked life. Right after chapter 4 of Genesis, we have another line. Genesis chapter 5, verse 5, we have the line of Adam, or people tend to say Seth. 
Genesis chapter 5 from verse 6. And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. And Seth lived after begat Enos 800 and what is it? Uh, seven years and begat uh, sons and daughters. And all of the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. And then Enos, then Cainan, then Mahalalim, then Jared, then uh, Enoch, that man who walked with God, then Methuselah, then Lamech, then Noah. Verse 32 of chapter 5. That's the holy line. The sinful line is in chapter 4. What we have coming down from very early, two lines. Now, we have the sinful line in Genesis 4. We have the holy line in Genesis 5. Right after these two lines, these genealogical lines, and these spiritual lines, one spiritually upright, one spiritually corrupt, we go to chapter 6 now in the book of Genesis. Reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. Now let's use our reasoning. We have a wicked line in chapter 4. We have a holy line in chapter 5. Chapter 6 says, the sons of God were attracted to the daughters of men. Who do you think the sons of God came from? The holy line in chapter 5. Who do you think the daughters of men came from? The wicked line in chapter 4. Many Christians believe that's angels. Angels don't marry. They don't intermarry. They don't have children. The Bible makes that clear. So the descendants of Cain produced some pretty women. <laughs> now, God made Eve pretty. Don't get me wrong. The Lord is not a God of ugliness. God is a God of beauty. But these women in the line of Cain, they were pretty. And the men from the godly line, they clearly began to intermingle. This is the verse. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, meaning the godly, saw the daughters of men, the wicked, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. What we have is intermarriage. Now chapter 6 prepares us to understand why God sent the flood in chapter 7. Are you following me? Yes. One of the major problems in the world before the flood was intermarriage. The righteous with the wicked. Adventists with non-Adventists. But the word as it is then, but you get my point. Now you can smile and giggle. This is a serious thing. It was this intermingling. The intermingling did not elevate the sons of God. It brought them down. So far down that when God looked, he found one family. The family of Noah. One. And whoever else believed they were dead before the, the flood came. God found one family, and he said that in Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And God the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Generation meaning the time in which the people live. I have found you righteous, nobody else. This is how much sin can sweep a world. Just Noah and his family. That's how far down God's people had fallen, the holy line. So far that you could not distinguish who used to be from the holy line from the wicked line. And they were all now the same. When wickedness and righteousness mix, righteousness is contaminated. And so God sent the flood. The flood passed. Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. God gives instructions to these eight people. How to live their lives, tell them what to eat, tells them if anyone commits murder, that person will sacrifice his life. You know, he gives them the basic instructions to organize this very, very primitive society. And he tells them multiply. Then he gives them his covenant, I will not send a flood again. He gives them reassurance that there will not be another flood to destroy the earth. That's chapter 9. By chapter 11, Let's read from verse 1 of chapter 11. 